But when the world was on the brink of nuclear holocaust, Kennedy talked to Khrushchev, and he got those missiles out of Cuba. Why shouldn't we have the same courage and the confidence to talk to our enemies? That's what strong countries do. That's what strong presidents do. That's what I'll do when I'm president of the United States of America. <laughs> This young man named Barack Obama got one of those tickets and came over to this country. And he met this woman whose great, 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 great grandfather had owned slaves. But she had a different idea. There's some good craziness going on because they looked at each other and they decided we know that in, in the world as it has been, it might not be possible for us to get together and have a chat. But something's stirring across the country because of what happened in Selma, Alabama, because some folks are willing to march across the bridge. And so they got together, and Barack Obama Jr. was born. So don't tell me I don't have a claim on Selma, Alabama. Don't tell me I'm not coming home when I come to Selma, Alabama. I'm here because somebody marched. You're free. Uh, I had a uncle who was one of the, um, who was part of the first American troops to go into Auschwitz and liberate the concentration camps. And the story in our family was is that when he came home, he just went up into the, into the attic and he didn't leave the house for six months. <laughs> Tragedy in Kansas. 10,000 people died. An entire town destroyed. <laughs> On this Memorial Day, as our nation honors its unbroken line of fallen heroes, and I see many of them in, in the audience here today. <laughs> so we just don't have enough capacity right now to deal with it. And, and it's not just troops, by the way. It's like Arab, uh, Arabic uh, interpreters, Arab language speakers. We only have a certain number of them, and if they're all in Iraq, then it's harder for us to use them. Uh, and, and obviously, they, they may not speak Arabic, but the, the various dialects that they speak in Afghanistan, oftentimes people who speak Urdu or Pashtun or whatever the languages are, they're going to be uh, needed in those areas, and a lot of them have ended up being placed elsewhere. <laughs> What all of us strive for is freedom as Franklin Delano Roosevelt described it. Political freedom, religious freedom, but also freedom from want and freedom from fear. At our best, the United States has been a force for these four freedoms in the Americas. But if we're honest with ourselves, we'll acknowledge that at times we fail to engage the people of the region with the respect owed to a partner. And when George Bush was elected, he held out the promise that this would change. He raised the hopes of the region that our engagement would be sustained instead of piecemeal. He called Mexico our most important bilateral relationship. He pledged to make Latin America a fundamental commitment of his presidency. And it seemed that a new 21st century era had dawned. Almost eight years later, those hopes have been dashed. Since the Bush administration launched a misguided war in Iraq. Its policy in the Americas has been negligent towards our friends, ineffective with our adversaries, disinterested in the challenges that matter in the people's lives 
and incapable of advancing our interests in the region. No wonder, then, that demagogues like Hugo Chavez have stepped into this vacuum. Because, you know, it is just wonderful to be back in Oregon. And over the last 15 months, we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. Uh, one left to go. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii I was not allowed to go to, even though I really wanted to visit. But my staff would not uh, justify it.